Hello, welcome to a new video. Today I'm bringing you my May reading wrap up. Buckle in, this might be a long one. Get a drink, because I read 31 books. Um, so the total number of pages was 11,238, and I listened to 86 and a half hours of audio. There was an average rating of 4.6, which is incredible. Um, I had one two star, zero three stars, nine four stars, and 21 five stars. It was it was a good reading month for me. Actually, scrap that. It was a great reading month for me. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through. Um I took part in two readathons. One I had 10 books for. And one I had 15 books for, but they were the, the 10 books were 10 of the ones I had for the 15. And then the rest were just extras that I read because, of course, there was extras. Um, So we're just going to we're just going to go through these. Wish me luck. So first up, I finally finished the Thrawn Ascendancy series. I read Lesser Evil by Timothy Zahn. This was a five star. I really, really enjoyed how this wrapped up. And it was really interesting to see this side of Thrawn's life because this is very much the earlier side of his life in the Empire. So it was really interesting seeing the, just the politics around it was just so interesting. Um, and I want to reread them at some point because perfect. Next, I'm going to do these in like, I'm going to try and like do these in like batches if I can. Um, so I read The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott and The Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. These were books two and three in the first High Republic trilogy. Um, so Rising Storm was a four star. It very much suffered from like middle book syndrome. Um, but Fallen Star was a five star. I absolutely loved this book. It was so well done. There was so much action in both, but just this very much felt like filler for the events of setting it up in Light of the Jedi and then the events of this. And I just, I think they were so well done. The audiobooks are incredible because it's more like, it's not quite an audio drama, but there are like sound effects and music in the background and it just really helps bring along the story to life and it was just I loved them. Next I read Tempest Runner by Kevin Scott. Now this was a four star and I'm gonna be honest this I was actually supposed to read between those other two that I just mentioned because the events take place at that point and I didn't realise that it wasn't very clear in all of the websites I was looking at so I read it after and I do think that affected my enjoyment a bit because I knew what was gonna I, I knew what was gonna happen. I I I, I it was a shame, but I did really enjoy it. And this is actually a script. Um, so if you're going to read this, I highly, highly recommend getting the audio book and doing it as like a, a mixed media read. Because honestly, full cast with this book was insane. It was so good. And I really enjoyed it. I do think it could have been a five if I'd read it in the right order. So that is definitely not on the book. It is on me for clearly not doing research or people just not giving the information properly. <laughs> Next, I read The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This was a five star. I really, really enjoyed this book. This was such a good end to the series. And I really liked how it just like wrapped up all the events that happened in the, in the second book, which I feel like this is one series where the second book didn't really suffer from middle book syndrome because each of the three books had their own can't think of the word but they like brought something to the series other than just filler and this just really rounded up the whole series just perfectly so good so good next up was my two star for the month and that was seven devils by elizabeth may and laura lamb i was so disappointed in this i'm gonna be honest not everyone would would dislike this book my reason for how much I disliked this book was because it felt like they had looked at all of the different stories in Star Wars and been like, I want to take this, this and this and put them into our book. But our book isn't Star Wars. So it was written like bad Star Wars fan fiction that was trying not to be written like Star, Star Wars fan fiction. And I just, I didn't care for any of the characters. I can't even tell you any of the characters' names at this point. 
because I was referring to them as Leia, Han, Luke. I, I couldn't keep in my brain the actual characters, which was a shame um, because I thought I might like this one, but I didn't. But oh well, we move on and it's a book off of my not only physical TBR, but also my net galley TBR. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Next was The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. I have had this book since it came out in 2020 because this is a literary version. Um, and I've only just got around to it, but this was a four star. I really enjoyed this. It was really interesting how the world worked with the booksellers, how the left-handed and the right-handed booksellers have different like skills. And I was just really intrigued by it. And the ending has made me really intrigued to read the sequel. I think the sequel could maybe be a five star, but at at, mo like, at least it, it will be a four star unless Garth Nix does something really bad, which I don't think he would because I trust his writing. I've read a lot of his books, but I really enjoyed this one and the characters were great. I really like the characters. Next up, I read Dogs of War by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This was one that I, I just wanted to read some Adrian Tchaikovsky because I'd only read Doors of Eden and obviously I went to... I went to the MCM blogger brunch and he was one of the authors there and I wanted to be able to have read more than one book. Granted, because I had no voice at this point, I ended up not really talking to him much. I literally just told him how much I enjoyed Doors of Eden and got a book plate signed so that when I get my physical copy of Doors of Eden, I can stick it in. But, um, but yeah, I'm really annoyed because I wanted to talk about Dogs of War because I actually really enjoyed this one. This was a four star and I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel, which is called Bearhead. Um, this was really cleverly done with the way animals are sort of like... It's really hard to describe without spoiling, but it's like these bioengineered animals that end up it's sort of like freedom fighting. They want rights or they deserve the rights and they're trying to fight for their rights and they're basically used as just like people for hire for different jobs and stuff. And it was really interesting seeing how that world worked. But yeah, it's really hard to describe that book without spoiling. So I'm just not going to just read the blurb and don't do what I did and think Bearhead was... A standalone because I nearly started Bearhead and then saw it was book two so I got the right book. <laughs> Next up I read Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This was a four star. I kind of thought this might have ended up being a five star but I just I think this series for me as much as I have enjoyed the series it's not a five star series for me but I really really enjoyed the couple in this. Definitely check trigger warnings because there is um one major trigger warning um around substance and alcohol abuse um, there is a few minor trigger warnings um especially one for the epilogue where it's like one line where something's mentioned but it could be triggering for some people so check up trigger warnings but i really enjoyed this and i love how we get the um the couples from the previous two books in as well because i just i love them <laughs> I love them <laughs> but this one was just really cute and I did really enjoy the couple in this and seeing them develop their relationship. I'm happy I finished this series. Next up was Feed by Mira Grant. Um, this was a five star. I am really really happy I read this. Um, this is one that I wanted to read a few years back and then found out that it wasn't actually a zombie book. But there was nobody to like properly go into what sort of book this is. So this, if you want to read this book, go into it prepared for a political thriller that's set, I think, 20 years after the zombie apocalypse has already happened. So there are a few instances where there are zombies in this and those are like intense scenes. However, the actual plot of the book is following a presidential campaign in, I think, 2044. So it's exactly 20 years after the apocalypse has happened and it is so political but it is so cleverly done and the like science Mira Grant has put into this was just so good 
and so well researched. It's great. Next, I read The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. I really enjoyed this. This was a four star. Now, it was a very high four star, but it was a four star. I, I wasn't connecting with the characters as much as I wanted to, but I'm hoping book two will really bring it in for me because the way this has ended feels like it's going to become more my type of book. So I have high hopes, but I really enjoyed this. I like how it gets straight into the action. There are trials in this and it literally gets into the trials in like the first couple of chapters, which I love that because I don't want to sit around building up to the trials. Then the trials take like three chapters. The trials last for like the entire book. And I love that because that is what I want from a book with trials. Next up was The Nine Eyes of Lucian by Madeline Rowe. It's a critical role book. This is a five star. I absolutely loved this book. Um, I will say, however, though, even though I know what happens in campaign two, like this is very spoilery for campaign two. And even though I know what happens, I haven't actually got up to that bit in critical role. I'm not that far into campaign two. So I feel like I should have maybe waited until I was past a certain point in campaign two, aka the end. But I didn't because I was impatient. So I think what I'm going to do once I've eventually finished campaign two, I am going to go back and reread this. And I think this will hit better for me. But I really enjoyed it because there's a bit where Jester's in it and Jester's my favourite. I'm a Laura Bailey girly if you didn't realise already. Next up was Otherworldly. By F.G. Lukens. I This is like one of my most anticipated books this year and it did not disappoint. This was a five star. This is my second favourite of the four F.T. Lukens. Um, I absolutely adored this. These characters were so cute. Ellery and Knox just deserve all the happiness. They're both absolutely adorable. I really enjoyed the magic aspect and the actual, like, <laughs> the other world. And the way that worked was so interesting. And the fact that this this city has had a winter for all this time and the seasons just isn't changing. It was so cleverly done. And I just I was just so here for it. And FG Lucans can do no wrong. They are like one of my favourite authors. You should read all of their books. I have found out today all four of the books are in Everand. Next up was To Cage a God by Elizabeth May. This was a four star. Now, I had very, very low expectations for this because this was actually my low rated pick for the Vampire Diaries Readathon um, because this has been getting some horrendous reviews. And I was honestly worried to read it because I was like, am I going to like this book? And I'm going to be honest, plot wise, this was low rated. I still cannot really tell you what the plot was about. I know what happened. I don't know what the plot was. However, the character work in this book was so good. I was so invested in all of these characters' lives. Like, I will read the sequel just to find out what's going on in their lives. I don't care what the plot is. That's how well written the characters are. So if you are someone that likes character-driven books and don't really care much about a plot, read this book and you might like it. Because I did. I would die for Vasilisa and Galena. They both hold my heart. I love them both. Um, but yeah, all of the characters in this were great. Next up, I read Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. I am annoyed it's taken me so long to start this series, but I'm really glad I finally have. I really enjoyed this. This was a four star. So I'm definitely, so far, not enjoying this series as much as Spellslinger. I think my main thing with Spellslinger is as well as loving the characters and the story, it was very funny and light-hearted whilst also having serious parts, whereas this was very much serious with a few light-hearted parts. So I feel like I'm used to Sebastian de Castell writing Spellslinger. <laughs> I don't know if this will change as I get further into this series, but as it stands, Spellslinger is still my favourite series by him. Um, but I am looking forward to continuing this in this series. I'll be continuing in july so yeah next i read the mark of athena by rick royden this was a five star has a rick royden book got less than five stars yet no um 
I really enjoyed this. There was so much that was happening and two of my favourite characters were back as like main characters again, which made me so happy. Um, and I just really enjoyed seeing it. I'm really enjoying this series and seeing like, I don't want to say too much, but like seeing the, um, the two camps, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but yeah, I will say like, I think I was a little bit spoiled for the ending of this and it's still frustrating me now um because it's the type of spoiler that wouldn't be a spoiler for everyone but it's it kind of took the it took some of the like joy out of reading the end of this um but I'm really looking forward to the next book which is going to be like my first read of June so I'll be starting it on the day that I'm filming this um next up was the fiance fast by Alexandria Belfleur and this was a five star Alexandria Belfleur is back I am so happy because I really did not like Count Your Lucky Stars. I feel like I gave it too high a rating, but it's too late to change now because it's all, on, all in my planner and stats. But oh well, um, this was a five star. Alexandra Belfleur has redeemed herself in my eyes. I loved this. This is sapphic, marriage of convenience, fake dating type thing. And it was great. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. So I'm very happy with this because I was giving her a second chance and she pulled through. We're near the end. Um, next up, I read my reread of A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. Tabbed to the hell out of it and had just the best time. Um, I didn't cry as much at this, this reread, which is odd. I know I'm not going to be able to say the same thing about the next book, but... I remember the first two times I read this, I sobbed and I didn't cry as much this time around and I don't know why. I think it's because I'm starting to see just how angry a certain character makes me. So I'm so riled up that the other emotions don't hit as hard, which is a shame. But at the same time, yay for not sobbing. Um, but I'm, re I'm really enjoying rereading this for Massalong. Then we have Magic Study by Maria V. Snyder. I'm reading this for the Chronicles of Ixia along. Um, this was a four star. I said in my vlog, I was a little bit disappointed in this one because it very much did feel like middle book syndrome, but in the sense that I wasn't the biggest fan of the direction this has taken. I really liked the direction of the first book and it's gone in a slightly different direction. And I'm hoping from the end of this, I feel like it could be. But I wanted to go back <laughs> because I missed book one. Um, but I am still going to be continuing the series because I did still enjoy it. It was still a four star. Um, I just didn't enjoy it as much as book one. And then I saved this one till the end because I've been reading these throughout the month. Um, I read 12 volumes of Attack on Titan. Now, I'm only putting one volume on here. I'm not putting all 12. Um, I read volumes seven all the way through to 18. They were all five stars. I just couldn't stop. <sighs> There's just so many cliffhangers and then I have to get the next volume, but then, oh no, but the, what about the volume after that? And what about the volume after that? And I'm already looking at getting the next three volumes because 18 ended on a big one. Um, so yeah, thanks, Jem. And I mean that in a genuine thanks, Jem, for getting me obsessed with this because it's so good. I will never be as obsessed with with it as gem but like it's not going to be a hyperfixation but i can understand her hyperfixation like th this was one of the best wrecks she's given me i'm very happy with this um but anyway that was my wrap up my favorite book it's going to come to no surprise now the thing is it was so close to being feed but then i read otherworldly so I think I feel like Feed should get an honourable mention for my favourite. But this was my actual favourite. Because I love it. Um, but in the comments below, let me know what your favourite book that you read in the month of May was. Let me know if you took part in any readathons. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye!